Hi everyone and welcome back. So today we're going to be reviewing iAI for the Nintendo Switch. Now iAI was released on December 9th of 2020 and its regular list price is $9.99. Now, just a quick reminder, as you're watching this video, if you like what you see, please don't forget to hit that like button. It really does help out a lot. And while you're at it, why not subscribe to the channel if you aren't already? And as usual for these type of games, the storyline is pretty, pretty basic. You basically play as an artificial intelligence that is trying to break free from its creation lab. And basically it hijacks the closest weaponized spaceship it could find. Once you have possession of this ship, you have to blast your way through 20 stages to make your escape. Now, obviously this isn't the type of game you play for storyline because basically that's about all you're gonna get. You do have one cutscene once you finish the game that does give a sort of cliffhanger ending, but other than that, storyline wise, it's pretty simple, but that's not why we buy these kind of games. Now, as gameplay objectives, it is still very traditional. Once again, these stages are all auto-scrolling and basically the sole objective is to survive till the end of the stage or defeat a boss at the final screen. However, where this game does inject some originality is that as you play through the stages and defeat enemies, there are blue floating orbs, which is this game's currency. And the currency allows you in between each stage to upgrade basically your weapons. So if we break down the different abilities and upgrades that you have in the game, well, we can start with your main weapon and you can upgrade your main weapon in one of three ways. First of all, you can upgrade the main cannon itself, basically giving you more powerful shots or giving you more shots at once. Secondly, you can also upgrade the homing missiles to your main gun. Basically at certain intervals, your main gun will fire off a set of homing missiles and as you upgrade them, they will become more powerful and also fire more frequently. And the last upgrade to your main weapon is a plasma cannon, which once again fires from the center of your ship in a straight pattern, but is a much more powerful shot than your main gun. It once again will upgrade at different intervals, and the more you upgrade the weapon, the stronger the shot, and the more often it'll fire off. After that, you can also upgrade your life meter, basically letting you take more shots before you die. And after that, probably one of the most important abilities to upgrade is your extra lives. Because to begin with, you have no extra lives. As soon as you die, you have to start the stage over. However, if you upgrade this ability, you can go up to one or two extra lives, giving you a shot to continue the stage because there are also no checkpoints in the stages. And after that, you can also upgrade and unlock some special weapons that are basically assigned to each one of the Y, X, A, and B buttons. On the Y, you'll have an electrical weapon that will basically clear a field in front of you. You have the X button that will fire a unibeam type weapon that will really clear a very narrow path down the middle in front of your ship. The A button after that will fire off a nuke type weapon that will basically obliterate everything around your ship. And finally, the B button that will let you plant different mines on the field that will basically float around and as soon as they come in contact with an enemy, destroy or damage them. And finally, you also have the ability to unlock or upgrade a shield for your ship, which will basically give you a period of invulnerability and also damage or destroy any enemy that comes into physical contact with your ship. But other than that, the gameplay mechanics are very straightforward. Destroy everything that comes on screen and don't get hit. Now, just before we move on to the critique, there is one more thing I want to talk about the gameplay, however. There is a huge, huge difference between the difficulty levels in this game. Not only in how hard it is, but also how the game plays out as a whole. Basically, if you want a linear progression throughout the game, play it on easy. You'll be able to play through most stages, getting random upgrades in between every stage now or then, and have to occasionally maybe replay once or twice a more difficult stage. Basically, easy will give you the more familiar arcade experience that you expect from these type of shooters. If you decide to start the game on normal or hard, however, expect a very grindy experience, where basically you'll have to play through each stage three, four, maybe even more times than that to basically get enough currency to upgrade your ship to actually have the power to most likely survive the stages. And actually, I found that probably the best way to play through this game is to work your way through all 20 stages on easy, unlock a lot of the weaponry, and then basically give yourself a challenge by replaying them on normal or hard with the weaponry unlocked. 
It'll make for a much more pleasing and less of a grindy experience. But if you want to give yourself a huge challenge, then start the game from scratch right away on normal or hard. You'll see you'll have an extremely grindy and long experience. Now, let's move on to the critiques of the game. So first, I always like to talk about what's working with IAI. Now, the first thing that this game really has going for it is that it has a very responsive and tight control scheme. Basically, for a game like this, this is probably the most important part overall, and this game really does a good job. Basically, the button layout is very comfortable, the abilities are very accessible, and at the same time, the ship controls at just the right speed, and when you basically die in this game, it isn't because you just got a cheap debt because the game got a false input. It really is because most likely you messed something up. Secondly, the graphics in the game are also a high point, I would say. And when I'm talking about the graphics, I'm talking about the overall graphics on the ship itself, the enemies, and more specifically, even the weapons. The ships and the enemies are generally gray, more bland color, but what really pops in this game is when you fire off any of your weapons. Basically, the bursts of light color coming from your weapons and the enemy's weapons really make for a visual, overall pleasing experience from the general gameplay sense. And the last thing that this game really, I find, has going for it is the variety of enemies you encounter. Basically, as you go through the game, you really have to keep adapting stage after stage because new enemies get introduced, and each enemy really does have a different pattern and way to deal with it. You also have a decent variety of bosses in the stages, and I would say that visually and even mechanically, the bosses are very different from one another. So once again, that's something I really appreciated about this game. So the first point I would say disappointed me about this game is although the general graphics are very pleasing, the overall backgrounds in the stages are very repetitive. Unfortunately, there isn't enough background variation from one stage to another to make you feel like you're really changing areas. Basically, if it wasn't for the enemies getting harder from stage to stage, by the time you play through the 20 stages in the game, you just feel like you played through the exact same stage 20 times, just once again with the enemies getting harder and harder from stage to stage. Now there is a progression in the background within each stage. It's just that when you get from stage one to stage 20, it just feels like they recycle that same cycle of backgrounds over and over again 20 times. And for looking at a screen for at least, I would say a straight playthrough would be at least three to four hours. Seeing the exact same stage 20 times really does get repetitive and they really would have had to break it up with a few different backgrounds. Now the second, and what in my opinion was the biggest disappointment in this game, was the overall sound, however. Basically, there's two things in the sound that disappointed me. Number one, your main gun sounds like a pea shooter. It doesn't sound like a powerful weapon, and when you hear it firing off constantly because you're constantly holding down the fire button throughout the whole game for three or four hours, the sound gets annoying. I mean, let's, let's just listen to it for a few seconds. Now imagine hearing that for three or four hours continuously. If you're playing small play sessions, it's not gonna get on your nerves, but if you start playing longer play sessions of this game, trust me, that sound really is gonna get on your nerves and Unfortunately, it sounds like a pea shooter. They should have done some kind of alternating sound just to break up the monotony. And second thing about the sound in this game that really disappointed me is the music or I would say lack thereof. Now, I actually pumped the music all the way up to the max. I, I use these settings for the music. But even at that, the music in this game just sounds like ambient background music. And if there's one thing you need to keep that adrenaline pumping in these awesome arcade shooters, it's some banging tracks. Like if you think back to the most classic arcade shooters that you still remember from the old school Genesis, Super Nintendo and whatnot, some of the things that people will talk about the most is the soundtracks of those games. Why? Because gameplay wise, it's pretty monotonous. You're doing the same thing over and over again from stage to stage. But what keeps that adrenaline pumping and keeps you in the game are those awesome soundtracks that often are pumping in your ears, edging you to push on and on. And in this case, they went for like this ambient computerized sound. And 
for me, it just doesn't work in this type of game. It didn't keep me engaged and wanting to push further and further into the game. So now we get to the verdict. And if this was the first video of mine you see, just to let you know, I don't use numerical scores. I give an overall statement, which is my suggestion for purchasing this game. And if you want to see what all those statements are, check out the description of the video. There's a full list of the statements and basically what they mean. And for IAI, I'm going to be giving this game a solid game. It does some things really good and the basics of the game are really solid. But unfortunately, the low points of the game make it unmemorable. And that's why I'm not going to be able to give it any higher than just a solid game. If you're looking for a good space shooter, it's a good place to put 10 bucks on. However, I can't say it's a definite pickup because in my opinion, in three or six months, when you think back what great games you played, I don't think IAI is going to stand out enough because of those monotonous backgrounds and that unmemorable music. So that's pretty much it for my review of IAI. If you bought this game and want to let me know what you thought about it, you can leave it down in the comments below. Also, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, don't forget that if you did like it, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Oh, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know when all my content comes out. And as usual, I hope I'll see you in my next video.